Why would anybody want to spend their life fighting other people? Why would that be beneficial to spend your life getting punched in the face and punching other people in the face. Why does that matter? Why are men so obsessed with it? Like obviously women like it too. Women MMA is blowing up, but my gym is mostly men. I'm sure most of you watching this right now are men. Why do men love it so much? I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, drop a comment, but I believe it's because combat is the most important or the most effective tool for personal and spiritual development. When I first started all of this, I was like 17 years old when I first turned turn pro. I ain't turn pro. There was no amateur. So I just started fighting professionally, but there was nothing else out there, right? And it was not like today. It was this is a long time ago. It was like 2002. So the state of MMA, especially in Western Canada, was like real gutter, right? It was still called no holds barred. It wasn't called MMA. And what drew me into it was I liked fighting. So I had an interesting relationship with fighting. I was scared of it, but I also was attracted to it. And then anytime anybody wanted to fight me on the street, I would always accept. I would never back down. Never back down. Like, like the movie, but like actually cool. <laughs> right? So um, I had just gotten in a fight in, in my high school, right? Some guy challenged me like whatever I'd said something to his girlfriend he didn't like and he's like I'm gonna bite I'm gonna beat you up I'm like okay let's go okay right, so we meet at the BMX track after school we scrap it out and I did pretty well right I was able to slip and rip and, and hit him with a bunch of shots blacked his eye this guy was supposed to beat me up as well I wasn't a big kid he was much larger than me. So after that, maybe a week later, uh, one of my friends came up and he, he approached me. He's like, yo, these guys are doing no holds barred. It's crazy. They like train and then they go out of town and they put a ring inside a bar in Lethbridge and everybody just fights and it's totally legal. Like, you want to come up? I'm like, yeah, like, let's go, right? Uh, so I started training with these guys. I learned some stuff, but it wasn't really that we were trying to be the best fighters in the world. We were just, we wanted to fight. So we would run and we would hit the bag and we learned a couple submissions and just training on the floor of this boxing gym. And then eventually I went out and I fought and I knocked this guy out in 24 seconds. Like first fight ever, 24 second knockout. Like just hooked. I was hooked from the get go, right? Just hooked. I proceeded to lose a whole bunch of times after that. But the whole point of this is like, I'm. I'm trying to paint a picture of where I was. I'm just like a roughneck kind of skater kid who's got like a bit of a hair trigger and is somewhat impulsive and down to do crazy stuff, right? And now I start fighting and what happened? At first I won, but then I lost, right? And then I lost again and I lost again and I won and then I lost. And then I lost, and then I lost, and then I won, and then I lost. I lost a whole lot. I lost a whole lot. It was really difficult for me to deal with the losses. And I find this to be a truth among many fighters. Women as well, but especially men, tie their self-worth to their ability to win fights. Their ability to be victorious in battle. So if you don't win a fight, you're much more likely to look at the reasons that you didn't win the fight. First reasons that I didn't win fights is just I had no technique. I sucked. Okay, I didn't know anything. So the first thing that I corrected was moving away from Prince George and getting access to high level instruction, right? I started training with Bibiano Fernandez. Tony Pep, Nicholas Iguala, Colin Danes, right? Some of the best specialist wrestlers, jujitsu, boxing, Muay Thai, I trained with Calder Gill and Paul Lalonde at this crazy gym called The Fortress. Maybe I'll do a video about that someday. Nuts. But I corrected my technical issues. And then I started winning all these fights, right? I started winning because I, I already had the work ethic, right? Thank God that I grew up in the way I grew up. I grew up pretty like, 
bush, right? I grew up in the, on the res in the middle of the bush, not like on a regular res, like on the other side of the lake from the regular res. It's reserve land, but it's like 400 acres, right? So we're like just in the bush and you got to chop a lot of wood. You got to pack water. You got to like, you got to work. So I grew up working. So that wasn't new to me. And Bill Mahood is like a maniac with his work ethic. So I worked a lot, even in the very beginning, Bill Mahu was my first coach, right? So in the very beginning, I already had that work ethic instilled. And that was never an issue. Technique was, I corrected the technical issue. And then boom, 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 boom. I'm beating all these guys. Until I met Mr. Rory McDonald. Rory, Rory helped me a lot. He helped me a lot. He actually, you can't see it because I'm wearing a bandana, but he gave me this, this scar that is one of the most prominent scars on my face. And it helps me to never forget this, to never forget this, uh, this lesson. Because I, ha I wasn't whole. I wasn't really a whole person in all of the different aspects, right? Which I believe to be mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally, right? I, the physical part I had, I had corrected, right? I already had the work ethic, so I was in shape. And now I had technique, but that's one of four. So that's not a very balanced table. I was barely balancing at all. Rory exposed my mental inability to be on, on the day. Something we've talked about before. In doing that, in doing that, it made me have to look. I had to lift up the rug that I didn't want to look at because like most men, we kind of change with a gun to our head. One of my wrestling coaches told me this, and it's super true, okay? I don't actually make steps forward unless my back is against the wall and somebody's got a gun at my head, like, grow! <laughs> so then I grow. And this is what had to happen with Rory because I was operating like I was like a bully, essentially. I was like intimidating everybody and trying to bring their mental state lower so that I could beat them because at the core, I wasn't confident that I could beat them at their best. So I tried to lower them by trash talking, by intimidation. I tried to lower their abilities to something that I thought I could deal with. And when I met Rory in the cage, he really didn't care. He'd been bullied his, most of his life. Like he's a young kid, he's pretty quiet, right? He's unassuming, he doesn't seem like the toughest dude when you first meet him, especially back then. He looked like a baby when I fought him. He was 18, right? Kids started fighting professionally at 16. So he had dealt with people that are trying to intimidate him most of his life. And he didn't care. He didn't care what I was saying. He didn't care what I was doing. He didn't care. He was just there to fight and he was focused on what he was gonna do and didn't really, bought, didn't matter what I was doing. And everybody that I had fought beforehand, they were quite reactive to this like mental attack that I would go through with. And just him not caring that I was trying to intimidate him, intimidated me. I was like, oh man, maybe he knows something I don't know. Why isn't he scared? He's supposed to be scared. Why isn't he scared? Why isn't this working, right? And then I get in my own head, and then I go out and fight, and it's just like, first round, I actually lit him up in the first round. I took him down, right? He tried to take me down, I took him down, and then passed his guard, got to a rear naked choke actually without hooks, but I got to the choke and he spun out like the round was, I dominated the round. But when I get back to the corner, I'm already breaking. I'm already like, oh man, can I do that again? Oh man, I'm really tired. Where he's chilling. Second round, it's pretty even. Okay, he does a little bit better. I do a little bit worse, it's pretty even. We're back and forth, but I'm breaking. Inside, I'm breaking. I don't believe in myself. I'm not confident. This was my main issue in my life was confidence and self-worth. Believing that I could do anything. Believing that I was good enough. Believing that I had the ability to hit somebody and knock them out. Believing that I had the ability to beat these guys or to do really anything of worth in this world. And so my, my mental state kept going like this and his kept going like this. And then in the third round, he ended up trapping me on the bottom and cutting me with an elbow, ref stopped the fight, and that was it. And I had talked so much trash that it hurt so bad. It hurt so bad, it was kind of pitiful. I was like crying, 
is really, really, like really embarrassing. At like the deepest level of my then, I was pretty young, I was like 23 or something, but my manhood was like just crushed, like just squished into the ground. It was horrible. But because of that, because I felt that, I was able, I was willing to look way deeper within myself than I had ever been before. I was willing to lift that rug up and see what the hell is under there. Why do I have these thoughts? What did I experience that created this within myself? Why do I think like this? And so I began a, like a spiritual journey essentially. I started fasting. I, I went back to traditions that I had learned in childhood. I grew up on the res and I grew up in a lot of um, sweat lodge ceremonies, fasting ceremonies. Uh, my family studied under these Cree elders in Saddle Lake, um, Vincent Steinhauer and Mike Steinhauer. And a lot of the teachings, I had kind of, when I was young and a kid, I didn't really care. I was like, oh, whatever. You guys don't know what you're talking about. Like, you think that this eagle feather is special like it's just a feather like you guys don't understand science right but when i started to look under the rock of my soul and see all of the shadows a lot of the things that they had said in these ceremonies started to make a lot of sense to me and when i started to apply them to my life i started to get better i started to believe in myself more i was able to become more whole because now I was addressing everything. I wasn't just trying to be the best technical fighter and in the best shape. I was trying to be mentally sound. Spiritually, I was trying to connect with that creation, creator, God, whatever you want to call it, the universe. Okay, so I was addressing all four table legs. I was addressing the physical aspect of fighting. I was addressing the mental aspect of fighting. I was addressing the spiritual aspect of fighting. And through addressing mental and spiritual, I addressed the emotional side of fighting. Because all of these things are very connected, far more connected than we really realize, especially when we're just in that like ego, right? Like, oh, I'm the best. Yeah, I got the best technique. I'm the strongest. Or nobody can beat me, garbage. The entire purpose of fighting is for you to discover what is within yourself and then to change it and become better, not only just in fighting, but in life, because life is fighting. Every single lesson that I have learned in fighting, for fighting, I take and apply to life and it works. And you can see this, any lesson that you learn in life, you can actually take it and apply it to fighting and it also works. There's a reason why some of the best fighters in the world also are great businessmen because they're the same thing. They work together. They're, one truth is if it's true in business, it's true in fighting. If it's true in fighting, it's true in school. Okay, if it's true in fighting, it's true in relationships, in child rearing. It's all the same thing. So in my opinion, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but in my opinion, the sole purpose of martial combat is for us to change and us to grow and for us to become balanced human beings, mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Have a great day, guys. I love you. Drop a like, drop a comment, talk soon.